one of the best parts of our job. This is definitely the best part of our job. We are live right now at the Mortal Kombat launch party, and uh, we're in Hollywood, California. You can hear the people behind us, and uh, yeah, it's a packed house, and we've got the game, more importantly. Well, not only do we have the game, but we've got these awesome cabinets they made. Now, talk about these cabinets. They're oversized arcade cabinets with big wide screens and the controllers. It's exactly how you want to play MK, if you got a budget and a lot of room in your house. <laughs> so we've got the game here. It doesn't have everything unlocked. They're keeping some secrets for you folks at home so you guys get in there and try it out yourself. But we're going to get to show more than anybody's shown off so far. Yeah, we're going we're gonna to take you through as much of the game as we can. We got a ton of guests. Ed Boone's going to come over here in just a couple minutes. We're going to talk about it. I don't think you guys have seen too much on story mode. We're going to show you guys that in just a second. Uh, and then we're just going to play the hell out of it for a long time. Yeah, totally. So should we start with the story? Let's get Ed over here. All right. So I'll go find him. So right. give me just two seconds. I'll be back. I'm going to keep you entertained while Ricardo Torres finds Ed Boone. And uh, in the meantime, I'm going to take a look at some of the options that are available if you guys haven't seen what they've got in this thing. There's a ton of stuff. Uh, so and we're also giving away copies of the game live here on the show. So definitely be watching and listening for trivia questions. We'll be throwing them out. We got copies of the PlayStation 3, Xbox 360. And uh, as we load up this game here and we get into it, it's uh, a lot of people, a lot of, I don't know if you hear all the noise behind me, but a lot of excitement surrounding this. The other thing they're tying into this, of course, is Mortal Kombat Legacy. And that is uh, the new Machinima uh, digi little digi series they've been showing. They got a 12 minute one up there now. So th there's some of the stars here from that Jerry Ryan, Michael J. White. A few of the folks are going to stop by with us, talk to you, taking your questions live, of course. If you want to get us your questions, hit us on the Twitter at GameSpot. Uh, right now, though, I think I'm going to jump into what? Uh, should I jump into a fight? All right, let's go ahead and get into a fight. Before we shoot, I'll do a little ladder action. And uh, let me get my character selected real quick. I'm going to go with, uh, who do you think? Uh, let's see. Yeah, it's PS3, Sean Kratos. All right, let's do some Kratos. You see in this character selection. So this is what we got here. We got some Kratos. We got some Shang Tsung. We got some Baraka Shiva, who I don't think a lot of people have really seen a whole lot of. We've got Cabal, of course, Raiden. We got Sub-Zero up the top, Kung Lao, Liu Kang, Scorpion, Sindel, Johnny Cage, Ermac. Reptile, Katana, Nightwolf, Melina, All right, Jade. All right, let's get into some Kratos action. So you've been playing some. I have. We yeah, both have. Hey, yeah, yeah, we've been playing. So it's straight up, thumbs hurt. Yes, <laughs> but it's the good kind of hurt. It, it is, is the good kind of hurt. With. Yes, this is totally. And, and, and for people that are wondering, uh, it, it, it plays pretty good. It plays real good. I think Mortal Kombat fans should be excited. I know I'm a longtime fan and uh, plays a whole. Yeah, it plays really well. So you can see Kratos coming on here. He's the the one PlayStation 3 exclusive character. Everybody knows and loves. So you know, bust off some max. He's got a ton of cool special moves. As uh, Ricardo will hopefully show us off there. He saw the bow come out there for a sec. Boom! Oh, the bow is deadly. It is. Shoots fast. Shoots free. He's got the chains. Hey, hey, that's the ball. There you go. Ball. A little throw yeah, action. It almost seems a little unfair, I gotta say. <laughs> oh, and there's the cool thing. Yeah, they do like the straight up, the straight up act, the active top. All right. Button pressing. That's two. Now, one of, the, one of the neat features about this that I think fans are really gonna dig is this. How's it? Go to the move list. Yes. Find out all of his moves. Got the special Which attacks. I totally was doing just to show you guys. The, the one thing, if you folks are wondering at home about fatalities, fatalities are in there for sure. They uh, they make you, if you've, if you've been a fan of the Mortal Kombat series for a while now, you understand that one of the ways you unlock stuff is using the crypt. So some of the stuff that is hidden, such as fatalities and uh, costumes, You've got to unlock by going through the crypt, and there's quite a few. We'll go in there a little bit and show you some of that, but there's tons of stuff or that's hidden in there. Show them some of this. They, <laughs> the X-rays, which you're seeing now, are simply awesome. Finish. And that is going to be a finish. Are you going to do Let's this? See. Do it. I'm going to try. All Let's right. Let's try this. So again. There you go. Awesome. There we go. Oh, okay. 
And these are deadly brutal. So we definitely give you the uh, as a trophy you got, vitality. Not for the younger viewers. Sorry guys, but <laughs> kind of awesome at the same time. Very awesome. <laughs> I don't know if you guys have seen the billboards or signs anywhere you live that say Fatality Lives, but we've seen them uh, in the San Francisco area as well as uh, here in Hollywood. Actually, I'm going to trade off for a second. All right. Um, I think I see Ed. Gonna All right. Grab him. Carl's going to grab Ed Boone, and I'm going to get in this match with Kratos. And I'm going to do some business. He'll be over in just a second, so. <clears throat> All right, so you've been playing it, and you've actually had the benefit of playing it in 3D. Yeah. So how's the 3D? It's, it's subtle, you know, it's like, it's, it's, it's not what you might expect in terms of depth. It gives some depth to the background, but it really raises the bars and everything you see on screen in terms of the, the UI and the HUD to the surface, so it definitely puts it, puts it up front. Um, and it kind of sells the x-ray attacks, let me tell it you. It really does, yeah, that, that that's awesome. And of course, one thing that people really haven't seen a whole lot of what we're going to show when Ed Boone gets, comes by is the story mode stuff, and that stuff looks great. Um, so you guys haven't seen much of that, which I don't think you have at all. It's uh, it's a big surprise. I know I was hugely surprised by what we got in there, and uh, yeah, very excited about that. And let's be honest, even though we love the series you grew up with it, Story makes a whole lot more sense now. Yes, it is definitely a refined storyline. <laughs> it really stays true to what you already know, though. Look, the other thing we should talk about while we're waiting for Ed to come by is that a lot of the same tricks that we've seen in classic Mortal Kombat games are actually in Mortal Kombat, the new remake. So basically, like, uppercut sweeps, all that stuff's back. Yeah, I gotta say, that's one of the reasons I like it so much, is yeah. it just feels real comfortable. Yeah. You know, we were able to pick it up right away and just kind of do what we do. It was a lot of fun. And, you know, got to say, it looks so good. It does. Zero. <laughs> We're obviously not too familiar with all of the finishing moves in the end. Down, down. Back forward. Nice. Very nice. Should we switch up and show them something else real quick? Sure, let's do that. Although, we should probably point out real fast, so, besides looking cool, while you're doing these things, you're noticing this little counter that you earn coins. So the coins are something that you use during the challenge tower. That's something that we're going to show you guys a little bit later. Uh, the coins you use for, I mean, you can unlock stuff in the crypt, but one of the neat things is for people that aren't experts at the game but still want to see a lot of the content, you can actually use the coins to open stuff up and just skip events in the tower, which is very handy. We, ha we, we haven't done that, I think, because we've been so focused at work about opening stuff up in the crypt. We unfortunately have decided to keep it real. They did. And not do that. I know that you kind of regret it at points, because telling you right now, the, um, the tower is hard. It is hard. And there's 300 challenges, correct? Yes. There's a lot of them. There are. Um, there Should are we show some of... Shiva? Sure. All right. Shiva. It's an old fan favorite. She got a redesign. She a little sleeker looking. Showing a little bit more cleavage, like a lot of ladies in the game are. She still got her good moves, though. Yeah. Horns, a little more pronounced. Let's, let's say it. Here's a classic. Show me what you can do. Valor, fight. And one other thing to point out, so this particular background kind of ties into the story mode. We don't want to spoil it. But I will tell you that the amount of backgrounds in the game huh, kind of kind of shocking. There's a lot of content in this game. Probably like way more than we would have expected. I, I know I did. All right, you know, the neat thing too is to see the evolution of those backgrounds. I mean, you can see the characters and that's obvious, but when you see the backgrounds that you remember from like MK2 and everything, it's awesome. <laughs> that had some real nice facelifts done, I'd say. Oh yeah. There's some Shiva action. Yeah. 
And she's definitely been fleshed out. Yep. That's one of the things. Everybody in the game now has uh, a pretty decent amount of moves that are all different and unique. That's especially true of the ninjas. Yes. Because there was a dark time for the ninjas <laughs> where just a different color. They definitely made huge differences between the ninjas now. They all feel like really kind of their own characters. Um, not just from the move sets, but certainly when you get in the storyline and you start hearing about the backstories of everybody and you know seeing how you know Sub Zero's brother and this and that without you know spoiling too much, it's uh, it's pretty good. They did a good job. All right, so we're kind of going off the script because Ed is a little tied up right now. <laughs> so we're getting our boy Hector here. You get the second string in. <laughs> You're totally not the second string. So introduce, introduce yourself, sir, for the guys at home. Hey, uh, my name is Hector Sanchez. I'm a uh, producer on uh, Mortal Kombat. And, uh, yeah, I'm here celebrating. Yeah, I'm super excited. All right, now, so for you, how long are you guys working on this game? Oh, wow, this game's been about two and a half years total of, uh, of work. We started development on it in about November of 2008, right after uh, Mortal Kombat vs. DC Universe came out. We, we hit the ground running because, uh, you know, what was happening around the time, so we wanted to make sure that we, we got a we had a lot of stuff you know in the in the tank at least. So uh, yeah, we started out then, and so it's been about two and a half years, and uh, it was great because with the transition to uh, Warner Brothers, there wasn't a big rush to, to get the game out the door. They wanted to give us time to kind of like gestate our thoughts and make sure that we had everything uh, available to us that we needed to make sure it was the best product possible. And uh, and you know I hope it shows. I mean people have been loving the game, so uh, that extra six months you can. Talk to any any game developer in the world. If you told them that they had an extra six months at the end of their project, they would they would love it, and, and we were afforded that opportunity. Now, you know, how clear thinking were you guys when you were kind of moving into this? You know, you said there was some stuff going on. You guys had to get going on it really quickly. Did you guys know the direction you were going in at that time, or were you like, let's yeah. just make a bunch of stuff? No, you know, Ed had a, Ed had definitely a, a vision that was uh, kind of influenced by the gameplay of MK versus DC Universe. You know, MK versus DC Universe was was not really a fully realized 3D game. It was almost like 2.5D because you had to hit the button to go in and out of the Z space on that. And uh, a lot of the gameplay, if you really you know stayed there, you could you know stay in kind of the 2D realm. And people were uh, people were really into that kind of like game mechanic and uh, you know we just wanted to pursue that and make it a, a fully realized 2D and then once that tech decision was made you know the game the game style and the story all came along with it it's like alright if we're gonna go back to 2D let's go back to 2D for real and you know try to try to prey on the, the nostalgia of, of the fans and talk about uh, you know go back to Mortal Kombat 1, 2 and 3 the golden age make sure that the that the gameplay you know felt like the old arcade games and everything just like went into place it was just like time for a reboot and it was uh, it worked out perfectly man the stars all aligned for us and, and we couldn't be happier so let's talk about the golden age for a second you know you guys have the old school gameplay for sure in this mm -hmm. Uh, was there ever any consideration to kind of go super old school and get some digitized stuff up in here? <laughs> you know, I, I, we joked around a lot. Uh, I actually, uh, I had suggested that we, we try to come up with a fatality where you actually got knocked into uh, into the 16-bit age, you know, like <laughs> pull one of those things where you do a fatality and you just knock somebody into like the 16-bit the era of the, <laughs> of the arena and stuff like that. But uh, unfortunately, we kind of just, you know, ran out of time at the end. But uh, you know, never say never with, uh, you know, there's uh, there's opportunities to do things like that now and, and may, you know, maybe we can explore something like that in the future. Obviously, there's a, there's a thirst in gamers for that kind of like retro art style, you know, like sword and sorcery on the iPad was, was one of those things that, that people really seem to gravitate towards and that was just like a, a super highly, you know, stylized retro art style. So, you know, Pixels I don't know. Are yeah, it's uh, it's it's uh, it's very cool, man. Like I, I can't say anything uh, more about the about the art style of this game. We have a very talented team, and and they really knocked it out of the park. Now, besides bringing everybody into full 3D, uh, in in more detail, I think than we've ever seen in the game. Uh, there's these. 
the x-rays. The yeah. x-ray attack. This is kind of a, a new way to bring pain. Yeah, you know, uh, Ed really wants us to push the envelope with gameplay each game. He doesn't want to fall into any kind of a, kind of a comfort zone with our gameplay. You, you know, we don't want to be, you know, kind of like the sports simulations where there's just the iteration every year and there's just a couple things that are different. Every game, he really pushes us to come up with a new gameplay mechanic so that the game feels fresh and there's something to look forward to this time around. And X-Ray is a, is a perfect example of that. That's something that we've never had before, and it and it and it's it's totally Mortal Kombat. You know, it's uh, it's visceral, it's it's gory. It, it makes you cringe a little bit. Sometimes it makes you laugh at the same time. Then you feel guilty about laughing at somebody else's pain. And I mean, it, it kind of hits all those pillars that that Mortal Kombat is uh, is popular about. But uh, people have been really you know getting into it. That's one of the highlights of uh, of the game development was when we debuted the game at E3. Uh, you know, back in Los Angeles. The first time that we did an x-ray, I remember, you know, we were in a closed room and, you know, the crowd just was like, oh, you know, you kind of saw everybody's face do that thing. And, and that was the that was the moment that we know that we, we struck a nerve with the, with the fan base. I got to say, having that game on our stage at E3, and Mac, you backed me up, yeah. kind of a highlight for us. <laughs> it was a highlight for us, too, man. You know, we were we were really nervous about, uh, you know, making sure that, that people wanted it and we didn't know what to expect. You know, we had been working on it in, the, in our dark secret lavatory and just like, and we were ready to ready to come out and and there was a lot of eyes on us you know not only from the fan base but you know also from Warner and stuff and uh, and it showed really well and we were really really excited and uh, and it just gave us energy and pushed us through the the final months of development it was a great experience and yes the GameSpot uh, debut we did very well we got a lot of views and a lot of people a lot of great comments out there so thank you to, to all the members of the GameSpot forums for for all the support we read those things and and we take what the fans say into consideration so thank you so how do you balance out the vision you guys have for the game, for the things that you want to try with what the fans want? Because fan base, very vocal. Yes, very vocal, very passionate. Uh, That's you know, one way to say it. Yes, they're very passionate. Uh, you know, it's a good problem to have. You know, yeah. uh, We're very blessed to work on a franchise that has such a passionate fan base. I mean, but at the same time, a lot of us on the team are are super fans as well like i i still remember being 14 years old and and seeing sub-zero rip johnny cage's head out of, and spine out of his body for the first time and i remember that feeling and i'm chasing that feeling now even to this day you know 18 years later and, that, and that's what motivates me and that's what motivates a lot of the members on the team as well like we grew up with these feelings we grew up with these kind of like huge reactions to these things and we want to kind of emulate that so we, we read the forums, we go to GameSpot, we go to a lot of the Mortal Kombat community sites, we see what people like about it, we see what people don't like, and, and we try to like balance that line. You know, we don't want to alien our fan base, but we want to push ourselves as well. So it's difficult, but it's a good challenge. All right, so some, as somebody that grew up with MK, right, for you to go work with Ed and do this, what was that like? What's it been like kind of seeing that whole team at work? You know, it's... Uh, it's a dream, you know. Sometimes I get nervous, man. I think that I, it sounds so cheesy, but sometimes I I get scared that I'm gonna wake up and somebody's gonna tell me that this has all been a dream, you know. Being a being a Latino from Chicago and now working on Mortal Kombat, you know, John Tobias You're lived. You're kind of a unicorn. Yeah, well, John Tobias, uh, you know, lived down the street from me growing up. He was a he was a few years older than me, but he was known in the neighborhood as like the, the cool artist kid at the end of the block. So, you know, a couple years later, when the Mortal Kombat phenomenon kind of took off. It was it was my game. I felt it was like a guy from the neighborhood is part of this thing that went out there. So it was really one of those kind of defining moments for for me to see that anybody can do it. You know, coming out of Chicago, a, a lower income, a lower socioeconomic class, and and see that somebody was able to to take part and create in something that was really big and and share it with the world was an inspiring moment that I always held on to. And now here we are, 18 years later, and we got bright lights. We're in Hollywood, and I'm working with Ed. You know, to this day, and 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 it's uh it's just amazing that it's it's come full circle, man. It's uh. You know, I, I have a lot to learn from the man. It's it's the greatest uh, it's the greatest job in the world. I wouldn't change it for anything. Nice. So we're gonna change it up. You guys have suggested a character. Who do you want to see, Ryan? You in the game? Uh, Who's I your want, favorite? I want to see some smoke because I, I think everybody's been waiting to see a lot of smoke gameplay uh, yeah. for the last couple of weeks. And we hear you, Internet. We know that you guys have been waiting for that, but we we have to hold some things for the end, you know? Yeah. But uh, Smoke is uh, Smoke is really cool, man. It, it, he's been one of those polarizing figures because people are expecting the kind of like robot cyber smoke from Mortal Kombat 3, but 
one of the things that one of the liberties that we've actually been able to have is that we're retelling the stories of Mortal Kombat 1, 2, and 3. So his storyline takes place before the whole cyber initiative of, of the Lin Kuei and and we get to see smoke in his human form and, and people are really digging it. Like people are oh he's gotta check the he's gotta check the moves list, man. Spoiler. <laughs> Spoiler. It's uh you know, he looks really good. Our our character artist took a lot of time with him. It was it was one of those characters where we were able to take a little bit of liberties. It didn't have to be exactly what it looked like before because his uh, previous incarnation was a robot. Now it's like who is smoke before he was turned into a before he was turned into a robot. And you know, when we were just talking a couple minutes ago, the ninjas are all different now. Yes. Like in very significant ways. Yeah. So what was that like for you guys? When did you guys make that decision? Because he could have cheaped out. <laughs> we could. I don't think there's a, there's there's no such thing as cheaping out in NetherRealm Studios anymore, man. You know, if we're gonna do something, we're gonna take it all the way to the next level. But um, it's really cool because we wanted to kind of keep that. Uh, here's a ninja suplex. I love this. This is my favorite. <laughs> The, uh, we wanted to have the ninjas kind of still have some sort of elements that group them all together. So you'll see that there's very, um, they have kind of the V shape that goes on on their kind of piece. They're very limbo. They're they're very reminiscent of the, of the earlier kind of palette swap ninjas that, that we had. But they each have their own independent kind of personality. They all fight differently. Uh, so, hey, I think people are trying to jump through. So, uh, so it's been cool. You know, we didn't want to do a carbon copy of each one. We wanted everybody to have their own independent, individual art style. Wanted to have them their own personality. Wanted to have the, let them have their own, uh, you know, story, their own endings, their own place in it. It was, uh, it was very, very cool, and it allowed the, the designers to have creative freedom with a bunch of them because you're not just designing one ninja character. You're designing six or seven. You know, and in addition to the characters, we're looking at these backgrounds, which. Very, very different than what they used to be. Yes. Because these, they're almost like characters now. Yeah. You know, uh, again, it just goes back to the whole reboot, you know. Uh, we have these iconic locations that exist in the Mortal Kombat universe. When you say Mortal Kombat, it's one of the few games where you actually recognize the arenas just as much as you recognize the characters, you know. Like, when you say the pit in Mortal Kombat, you already have a vision in your head of what that pit is supposed to look like. So with the technology that's afforded to us with the next generation consoles with like 360 and PS3, we can realize those kind of like images that the, the artists have had in their head, but just do different things with them. Uh, you know, the pit, we were able to, to do two different incarnations. We can do the pit during the day and the pit at night. The temple, which was a very popular arena in MK3 because of the stained glass and stuff. All right, now with our Gobo technology, we can actually cast different light rays coming through the stained glass on the characters. It's just fully realizing these backgrounds in 3D in a, in a way that has never been seen before. And we're also blessed to have some of the original uh, designers of the arenas on our team to this day. So like Tony Goski, people like that that have actually designed the original, um, the original arenas are able to see their kind of like basic creations that they've made on the, you know, a really uh, you know, lower end computer uh, fully realized today. Yeah, one of the things for folks that don't follow another realm as, as closely as others, how much of the old school team is still there? Uh, you know, it's funny. Everybody from the original Mortal Kombat team is still there, with the exception of John Tobias. So John Vogel is still there. Dan Ford and the original sound designer is still there. Ed Boon, the original programmer, is still there. You know, in Mortal Kombat 2, uh, Tony Goski, one of the environment artists, he joined the team. He's still there. Uh, you know, Mike Boon, Ed's brother, he joined during Mortal Kombat 4. He's still there. There's still a lot of these guys at Mortal Kombat. It's like, a, it's like an avalanche. It's like a family, man. Once you get in, you know, you, never, you can never leave. Blood in, blood out, you know? And so I've got to ask, just to be kind of, kind of a nerd, so Shang Tsung can do his thing. Yeah, he can. But he can't do all the things that we want him to. <laughs> no, you know, we, we uh, that was a conscious decision, and, and we thought that it would be cool. It's almost more humiliating to pick Shang Tsung and then do the, kind of the soul steel move where he actually turns into you and then kicks your ass with your own moves. Like, I think that's uh, almost a little bit more aggressive than than, uh, than just having him be able to, to morph into any character. So. I won't lie, and I'll say that's very annoying. So you guys kind of hit the mark there. <laughs> it is. Uh, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's uh, to, to add insult to injury, when Shang Tsung is morphed into your character, he even does more damage than you can possibly do. Yeah. So it's kind of that little extra kind of like a jab into you as well. Yeah, I'll tell you, the game is tough, but tough in a good way. 
Yeah, you know, the we spent a lot of time on the AI this time. We, we didn't want to just have kind of a, a carbon copy uh, face of everything else. So we actually had time, and this goes into that whole polish phase that, that we haven't really had before, where we were able to sit back and actually play against the computer and take notes and say, all right, when you have the computer in this position, we want to have the AI to actually escape and do these kind of concepts, these kind of strategies. And, uh, you know, that was something before towards the end of the project we just didn't have because we were just trying to finish, you know, to make it out for the holidays. But but now, you know, with this extra time, we were able to take it and polish the AI. And it, it is, it's very difficult. It's very cheap sometimes. It's frustrating as well. Now, one thing I got to point out, that for all the technology you guys are using to make this game, all the art, all the whatnot, you know, one of the unlockable things in the crypt are some sketches. Yes. And I got to say, it's kind of funny that you guys still do the fatalities the way that you do. You want to talk to us about the art process for that? Yeah, you know, uh, it's funny, man. Fatality meetings are always uh, are always great. Uh, basically, what we do is we kind of like uh, we kind of like hang around and we kind of bounce ideas off left and right for each other. And Ed will pick out the the best ideas and we'll kind of demonstrate them to him. And then he'll go home and he'll kind of uh, storyboard them out based on what our like physical descriptions are and what our things are like that. So I'll come back the next day with these like rudimentary stick figure kind of like drawings of each one of them. And it's funny to see like your ideas realized in that kind of like format because in our minds obviously they're like these big grand events and he's able to just nail it down to like the most basic rudimentary you know points to make sure that the timing and the camera shots are there. I mean the guy's a genius, he's been doing it for a long time so he knows what, we're, what he's doing. And uh, it translates well, I mean everybody understands the Ed Boon language at NetherRealm so it's, uh, it's really great. Now, the, you know, here we're seeing like a, an old favorite, kind of, he's still kind of a jerk. Yeah. So you guys tweaked him a little bit, because he's a little more, he's kind of more cat. Yeah, he is. You know, uh, Kitaro obviously was a, a, a really big kind of, like, I wouldn't say fan favorite, but maybe he was uh, a little bit cheaper than everybody else. But we wanted to take a little bit of liberty with, uh, with his character design and make him a little bit more feline and focus more on the tiger aspect of his personality instead of the more monstrous. You know, we have, obviously with 360 and PS3, we have a lot more fidelity that in now with the kind of facial structures and the character models than we had in the past. You know, and he's still kind of a jerk. Yeah, he is pretty cheap, man, but... Uh, one of the good things about them is that they can never really get out of these, uh, you know, hell using Scorpion against Kentaro is a, it's a really good tip. Just just spam the spam the ground flame and, and you'll be able to uh, take it. And if he's jumping towards you, here's some extra tips for your fans. If he does this kind of like teleport where he's jumping out, just jump backwards with a with a jump kick and you'll be able to pull him out of the out of the crowd. Nice. Alright, I don't think we want to finish the game, but we can show the match. I'm getting looks over here. Uh, we should, but we're going to actually swap Hector out. I yeah, think. okay, I'm leaving. Bye, guys. I love you. Mm. All right, thanks, man. So, oh, yeah, Hector, uh, we're going to need you to sign these. Oh, yeah, no we're problem. We're going to make you do some work. So, okay, for you guys so at home, what we're doing here is we're getting, uh, we've got two copies of the PS3, two copies of the Xbox, and two copies of the soundtrack to give out. Oh, wow, the They're soundtrack all gonna get awesome. by everybody that's here. All right, so, awesome. I'm going to doing to my his boss. homework. We're going to get Ed in here. Ed. Come on in, sir. Oh, thank you. All right, everybody, we've got we've got the man. It's his, it's his night. Hi, Ed. Good. How's it going? How are you? How are you? Sorry I'm late. It's all good. So, Mac and I are we're showing this for the folks at home. So, for you, it's been like a what? Two plus year journey. Yeah. What's it like to see this basically done played in front of you right now um it's exciting you know it's it's really it's you know it's weird because i you know this is all we've been staring at for the last you know couple years and so it, it doesn't feel as new to us as it does but it's cool to see people excited about it that to me i'm looking more a lot more at people's reactions than i am at the, the game in particular nice all right so we got some questions for you from the folks Round at home two, uh, fight. we're gonna start out with a tough one from a very disgruntled member of my staff, actually. He wants to know why Rain was left out. Why, why Rain was left out? Yeah. Well, I guess, you know, when you think that you have 60 characters, about 60-something characters in our in our kind of universe, somebody's got to be left out, you know? And, and I, I, I don't know. I guess I don't know why Rain is... Um, 
is, is any more important than like, you know, I don't know, Kenshi or something like that. There's one dude on my staff, very important to him. All right, so moving on. Um, show that screen. All right. Yeah, so we're going to go into the story mode right now. Uh, so explain to people at home about the story mode, because for Ryan and I, that's been the most surprising thing about this game. Oh, really? Yeah, because we knew you guys were going to have a story mode, but this is a different kind of story mode. This is kind of a, a, re a complete reboot. So talk to us about why you guys did that. Well, um, in some ways, this is a continuation of the Mortal Kombat Armageddon story mode. You know, this opening sequence is the destruction, the the uh, the aftermath of the you know all of the, the the carnage that happened from you know that whole Armageddon uh, sequence, and you know it kind of opens up with with this kind of you know pretty much establishing that everybody's dead. And uh, that much is very clear. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Little subtleties, and um, then basically the 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 the, the game goes up to this uh, pyramid here at the top which is one of the big images in the in the last game and it has like a um, you finally see Raiden and Shao Kahn kind of battling it out you know Raiden basically losing and um, that's the premise of the whole game is this this moment here where Raiden t makes one last ditch effort to um, to kind of save all of humanity by sacrificing himself nice so how much of a hand did you have in kind of shaping where this went? Obviously, it's your baby. Well, yeah, you know the whole the whole concept of the time travel and 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 you know going back is something I I've always been a big fan of from the from the Back to the Future days. You know, like yeah. that. Oddly enough, oddly enough, Back to the Future inspired some of this you know overall direction. So I had kind of you know. You know, kind of uh, approached the guy, the guy, the storytelling team, and said, you know, hey, I really want to go back. I want to retell the stories of Mortal Kombat one, two, and three. And you know, they kind of came up with some of this this premise of, of sending Raiden sending a, a, a message back to his former self. And we're playing in that whole um, diff alternate reality. Nice. All right. So he's seen better days. Yeah. Yeah. He's, this is basically yeah Shao Kahn. Yeah, so folks at home, we got Ed here. Uh, we got some questions for him, but we're sure you do too. So shoot him out to Ed GameSpot on Twitter. We're going to keep going with our questions. Uh, let's move right along. Sorry, Raiden, I'm going to Barry. But you can see that it's maybe not a good time for Raiden. Exactly. This is kind of like his, his final moments before he dies, basically. And he's kind of like, this is his last-ditch effort to, you know, send a, a message back to his former self before Shao Kahn kills him right right here. Which, pretty sure that connected, so we know yeah. where that went. Yeah. Now, as we're talking about a reboot, was there ever any um, thought to add new characters? It's brand new. Yeah, you know, um, I guess from a story standpoint, we really, you know, part of what this game was was like a fan service thing. You know, we really wanted to, you know, the last game we made was a T-rated game. And if, if there was any any kind of message that really resonated amongst the hardcore Mortal Kombat fans, is okay. That was great. That was fun. But let's get back to what more Mortal Kombat, Mortal Kombat. So we really we said, okay, that's that's going to be the theme of this whole game is Mortal Kombat being as Mortal Kombat as it can. And um, so obviously, you know, um, the story was a big part of it. So we said, let's you know, let's do a rewind and. You know, we're able to tell details now that we weren't able to back during Mortal Kombat 1, the arcade game. And, I mean, from a storytelling standpoint, is it safe to say that you guys maybe didn't think to do some of this stuff back then because it just wasn't... Games were different then, right? Yeah, yeah. And, you know, and our goal was always to, like, we wanted to have what felt like a feature-length film, you know, with, with interactive moments in the, in the game. And that was really kind of like the premise for the story mode we wanted going in and out of the fights to be all seamless and you know like the, the experience was just like watching like a film nice alright and, and one of the neat things about the story mode is that we, especially at the early end of it we see the characters kind of become what they're going to become so for example 
Johnny Cage, kind of rocking. Well, let's face it, it's kind of a Miami Vice outfit. Let's not lie, it's linen. Yeah, that, there was a little inspiration from that. What's cool about it is, you, you know, you have these characters that you've known for so many years. You've seen them, you know, represented in movies. But in terms of our video games, we never demonstrated, you know, with, with um, a scripted, you know, scene, Johnny Cage meeting Sonya, you know, her reaction to it and just how cocky he was. And that was a lot of um, what we are excited to be able to do now. Yeah. All right. So one other element of the game, it just as a longtime fan, I've been very impressed by is even even the folks that I grew up with that maybe didn't play fighting games as much have been getting into this, which leads me to my question about how do you make a game, especially like Mortal Kombat, accessible? Um, to me, it really kind of boils down to a really simple premise of like, in terms of the fighting, how if you were to ask yourself, you have something that's cool that happens in the game, how how many out of ten people can make that happen? You know, so if you have something where it's like a one tick window and you got to do this and you got to yeah. frame count and all that stuff, one out of ten guys are really gonna love it, but the other nine out of ten. They might look at it and go, well, I'm not good enough to do that. Our, our goal was to always have as many out of ten be able to do it and have a good time for it. And the story mode is a great way to kind of ease players into that. So it's a combination of a number of things. And we should mention, Ryan's kind of deep in the middle of some Johnny Cage action, so we won't have him go to it. But you actually have a lot of tutorial material in here. Oh, That's yeah. more than just, this is how you... You know, just the static screens. It's all interactive. Talk to us about the tutorials that you put in the game. Yeah, you know, this game is introducing a number of kind of, a, a number of kind of, a little more hardcore fighting mechanics too. You know, this is the first game we really are catering to the hardcore guys, and we knew that the casual guys would need a little bit of um, of an introduction to it. So, from the standpoint of the basic moves, some of the more advanced special moves, the X-ray attacks. We even have a fatality trainer, which basically lets players sit in a room and and try out fatalities without a gun to their head, with you know the finish him and the counting down and all that. So. All right. Now you mentioned you kind of trying to gear the game towards more hardcore players, and that does kind of beg the question that we've had going around the office, kind of about the way the game feels. So what do you think the flow of an MK fighter is that makes it different from a Tekken or a Virtua Fighter or a Street Fighter? Well, I think every, to me, you know, I think all fighting I don't think Tekken plays anything like Street Fighter. I don't think, you know, Mortal Kombat plays anything like Tekken. And so, you know, if I were to describe Mortal Kombat, you know, it's it's probably a little bit more uh, frenetic, you know, it's probably a little bit more um, you know, more more attacks per second, so to speak. And, uh, you know, where Street Fighter is probably a little bit more, um, you know, setting yourself up for the one hit, setting yourself up for, for the, 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 your, your one hit strategy. And Mortal Kombat is, you know, kind of like, you know, bang, 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 where you're stringing together, you know, special moves more together. So I think that's kind of like the general feel of that. Tekken is a lot more of like, you know, longer string combos, you know, the 10 hit combos, the longer sequences. So I think the pacing of all three of those games is pretty dramatically different. Yeah. So, one of the other things we noticed is it, there's a very old school feel to the game in terms of some of the, the tricks that we would use, the sweeps, the uppercuts, all the good stuff. A little cheap sometimes, but we know how to do it right. Did you guys consciously put that in and make sure that it would work like it would before? Some of the stuff like, you know, like strategies with sweeps, strategies with jumping over projectiles, jumping over crossover kicks and all that stuff, that we did put in. Some of the stuff like, you know, your strategies with the AI opponents or, or, or something like that, they just kind of like, you know, they just kind of got inherited as we implemented the other features. Nice. Now, so it took you guys over two years to make this, so not that I want to bug you about a sequel yet, you need a break. But that said, you guys have now rebooted the MK sort of genre completely, not genre, but the, you know, the series completely. So it's kind of a blank slate for you. Obviously there'll be a sequel to this at some point, but you know, we kind of dug Shaolin Monks and those kinds of games that were in the MK universe, but not quite a traditional fighter like this. What do we think about stuff like that? You know, ever, ever since we made the first Shaolin Monks, we've been talking about 
you know, how we'd love to make a sequel to it. You know, there's a number of the guys from the from the original Shaolin Monks, Shaolin Monks team, you know, walking around here. Some of the guys left. Some of the guys are working on God of War. And uh, so we'd love to make one. Um, you know, I guess we, we always think of these games as one at a time, you know, whenever we can uh, think about this game, then we'll probably kind of sit back and think, you know, what's a time to do, what's a good thing to do next. All right. So what you're saying is if we get everybody to bug you, then you'll make one at some point. Yeah. If we get enough enough Twitter questions, we'll, we'll definitely do it. All right. Internet, you know what to do. Bug him like there's Internet. no tomorrow. <laughs> All right. So moving on. Now that we're in it, why did you guys make such a concerted effort to do so much for a single player story mode in this game because I mean fighters in general you do sometimes you kind of blend everything together and your story is really short and you go up you fight your 10 people or whatever and you're done but you know we're obviously not going to show the whole thing tonight because we couldn't there's a, there's a lot more to this story mode than you think why was that a priority this time out um, you know we um, we started uh, presenting the story in this format uh, in the last game, uh, Mortal Kombat vs. DC. It was a scripted thing, and um, but we always felt like there was, um, that was kind of like just, just the beginning in terms of that, you know, I really feel like um, Mortal, one of Mortal Kombat's strongest, most I, biggest identity features is its story. The fact that the characters have a relationship with each other and they go back and forth. You know, we kind of started that with the little biographies in the in the first game, and then the endings and all that stuff. And now, you know, with this, this is the first Mortal Kombat, M-rated Mortal Kombat on the, this system. So it's like we, this was the first time we really had the ability to tell this elaborate of a story. Nice. Now, what we're what we're doing right now is we're playing the final game that's going to be out next week. But you've been real vocal about how DLC is going to play a large part in, in its life. So talk to us about how important DLC is to, you know, your strategy with this game. Like, because you're not just going to ship it, walk away, go sit on the couch, right? I know you'd like to. Uh, right. Well, you know, this, this we actually wanted to do DLC in our last game, but the circumstances kind of prevented us from doing it. So we always knew that we wanted to do DLC for this game. And admittedly, this is something we don't know what people's reactions are going to be. You know, they may, they may devour it and we may do just a ton of them. Or they may be like, you know what, I already got 20, 25, 26 characters, I'm good, you know. And so we're definitely excited and um, curious as to like how people's reactions are going to be. We think it is going to be cool just because people seem to be you know, we're gonna start teasing the uh, the, the, the characters stuff. that are coming and all that stuff. So, so we're we're just as curious as everybody else is in how people like it. And so, the way you guys have built the game, it will support a DLC of a different of all kinds of varieties, right? Yeah, absolutely. So there's not gonna be like a a dash edition with three more characters and a couple of. Oh, you no. guys are gonna take care of us, right? Right? Yeah, yeah. That, that, that's a good question. Um, I I guess the um. That's an interesting uh, way to look at it. Um, I guess we, we just want to keep the game kind of fresh and, um, you know, really have um, uh, a, a chance for players to kind of vote who they want to see the most, you know. And, and for the most part, that's the approach we're taking is the, the ones that we've heard the most um, clamoring for and, uh, you know, and... Uh, and bitching in some in some in some uh, examples are the ones that are going to get in. And so we're, we're seeing you know Johnny Cage and Sonya fight. I do have to ask because you know you, as you guys redesigned everybody, is her outfit really that protective? Well, that was the source of a lot of debate on our right. team, back and forth. Everybody, you know, oh, we got to cover that up. Come on, what's going on like that? And you know, um, we appreciate it, but that's not going to stop a bullet. Yeah. And uh, obviously, obviously one side won. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So don't worry, internet. You'll be taken care of. All right. Next, looking, you know, looking long term at the MK franchise. What would you say was your biggest regret about it so far? The biggest regret? Um, I don't know how much of this was we were in control of, but I felt like there was, um, I felt there was a period where where, where too many iterations were coming out. You know. 
there was well, you know we had done like um, uh, Deception, Shaolin Monks, Armageddon, and Mortal Kombat versus DC. It was like five games in six years or something like that. You know, it was it was it was a lot of it was a lot of. Um, it was like a Madden. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I just, I just don't you know we really want each one to be a special event, have a, a clear identity, and have a chance to breathe. You know, you know, like that. So to me, that's probably the. And so, what do you think your biggest success so far with the franchise? Um, I think we've had some definite spikes, you know, in terms of um, some of the reboots and stuff, and and they're probably proportioned to how well they they sold and all that. You know, Mortal Kombat 2, the first arcade game, I think was one of our our highs for sure, and in some people's eyes, it was our our, our highest high. Um, you know, uh, you know, we waited five years after Mortal Kombat 4, and Deadly Alliance came out, so we sold like almost four million of that. So that was really well, and and I think this one's going to be a high. I really believe that this is going to be one of one of the the kind of like the pivotal entries into the series. So. Now, one of the things that we you know we've been showing to the folks at home has been the move list that you can call up during the game, which is really handy. Now, I have to say, as somebody that remembers playing this thing in the arcade back in the day, when such things were a little crazy and you had to kind of make your own, yeah. the game seems like it's awfully good at documenting the special moves and the fatalities and whatnot. So, is there nothing hidden for people to find? Oh, no, no. No, there's, there's, there's pl plenty of hidden stuff, you know. There's hidden fights, hidden, you know, hidden things that people haven't seen. Um, but philosophically, you know, we, we did kind of have a um, um, a realization that people with with the internet and, and people, you know, there's just not that kind of patience that people had in arcades where you know you can hold on to a secret for a few weeks. Once something is learned, the whole country knows it in 20 minutes, you know, and that's just the reality of what it's like with the internet, YouTube, yeah. Twitter, and all that stuff. So we don't even try to like fool ourselves into thinking that we're going to hold it up. So we figure we want is we might as well put it up in front of it, and the casual player can enjoy something that he might not have even had access to before. But it's safe to say that if you are old school and hardcore, and you do like poking around to see what kind of trouble you can oh, get into, there yeah. might be some stuff in here, won't there? I I I guarantee you there will be things coming up that nobody has heard of because I because I I've seen all the stuff that's leaked out. And it's not everything. So there's 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 a good amount of stuff that's still going to be uh, discovered in there. So now one of the things that we talked about with Hector was that for all the technology that you guys are using to update the game, make it look amazing, there's still a very kind of old school approach to fatalities because we we did unlock some of the stuff in the crypt, and we should tell the folks at home it's the biggest crypt you guys have ever had, right? Seems like there's an awful lot of stuff to unlock. Well, it's, it certainly has the biggest kind of variety, you know, it's like, like the previous crypts were a lot more of a, like a grid. This is like, you know, you have a graveyard, a blood marsh, wastelands, all these kind of crazy things. So it's the widest variety of objects that have been in the game, but it's not um, like on a per count basis. I think the Deadly Lions has the biggest one. But we don't have pictures of like us on bicycles or anything like that. Now, but one of the things that you can unlock there is kind of the, the old school approach to fatalities. And, and some of those are yours, I believe. Yeah. So, quick quest, you've been doing this for so long. Why didn't you learn how to draw? Because <laughs> I'm not an artist. I'm not an artist, and uh, I don't pretend to be one. Okay. Uh, I, I can do what the most minimal thing to communicate an idea, and that's it. <laughs> So we're going to switch to tag mode because this is another thing that it seems like people didn't quite realize is another big element of the game is this whole tag component because it's not just tag another player in. There's actually mechanics to it. Oh, yeah. You can call your buddies in. You know, do you have to ask? You, you, I know you wanted to go content heavy, but this was kind of an additional set of work that you guys had to do as, as well, right? So. Why so fleshed out? Why so what? Why'd you guys decide to flesh it out as much as you did? Um, 
we've always been a we've always been a fan of, 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 of like you know huge fans of of, of doing like um, you know Marvel versus Capcom yeah um, you know even Tekken Tag and all that stuff and we and we've always wanted to kind of get a um, kind of like a. a our take on it, Mortal Kombat take on it. So we've always seen like things like, oh, we want to get, you know, um, what would it be like to having Johnny Cage and Scorpion together, you know, Sonya and Jax, you know, as a team, and they're, they're, yeah. they're, that, that really added a whole new element to it. A lot of people haven't really even, haven't really even experienced some of the stuff that we've hidden in terms of the tag team stuff. So we're really, you know, I can't, I can't wait for people to really start getting online and getting really good with their two favorite characters. I think it's going to be a huge component to this game. Nice. All right. Now we're looking at some of the questions coming in. Uh, got somebody asking if you had a chance to check out MK Rebirth on Machinima. Oh, yeah. What do you think about it? Uh, the new one or the original Rebirth that, that he did? Uh, I just see it. What do you think of the videos of MK Rebirth? I, I think, I think, um, you know, Kevin, Kevin's like, he's, he's the guy, in my opinion, he's the guy who should be doing a third film. You know, like if, if a third film's going to be done, he's the guy, he, you know, he, he, he grew up playing Mortal Kombat. When I met him and talked to him, he knows more about it than I do. You know, he told me that all these details and stuff like that, and it's just, um, he's such a passion for it that, um, my, my first reaction is, you know, let's sign this guy up. <laughs> nice. Let's see. Looking at, looking at some questions. Now, how much fun did you guys have with the background? Because Sorry? How much fun did you guys have with the backgrounds? Now that uh, you can actually animate, which is good. Yeah, a lot of the backgrounds are... Um, kind of like modern versions of what people remember from back in the day. Yep. You know, so the living forest, there's always trees, you know, talking and never not talking, but you know, roaring. Everybody said, oh, you should be able to throw throw the guys into the trees. And so we knew we had to do that. Yeah. The subway, you know, with smashing the guy's head on it. The, the biggest fun with the environments to me were the fatalities, the background fatalities. So that was like such a... Um, Everybody had so much fun coming up with ideas and you know crazy things that you could do. So, uh, but it, it's great to see like you know today you know uh, graphics in 2011 doing something that you remember when you were you know 15 years old or something like that. It certainly feels like the early 90s again, and that's exactly. not a bad thing. Yeah, that's a, that was our goal. All right, well we've got we've got Kevin here who directed this. He directed one of the videos that we're going to be watching tonight. Uh, yeah, who okay. just walked away. We'll get they were looking second. for Kevin. He um, literally just walked away. But uh, before you know, before we send you off so you can go have some fun, why do you think MK's managed to still resonate? Because if you think about what, back in the day, MK, once it came out, a lot of people around these types of games, bloody, violent, what have you, and they've all gone away and MK's still around. Why do you think it still resonates with people? Uh, I think a couple of reasons. One is, is you know, we, we, we did kind of hit, we kind of impacted people at a very impressionable time in their life. You know, somebody's, like everybody always says to me, oh, I remember the first time I saw Mortal Kombat, it was in a pizza hut. I'm, I was 13 years old. And, you know, we always used to go there or a convenience store or a bar or something like that. And um, with that, each sequel that we've done, we've tried to introduce something that they haven't seen before. This game, even though there's a lot of, you know, a lot of stuff that you feel nostalgic, the whole X-ray mode, the X-ray move, and the challenge tower, and the king of the hill, and all that stuff, those are new things that I think keep people's attention and keep people's interest, and that on top of the nostalgia factor, I think it's a mixture of the two like that. That's... And for you, I mean, you're, this still excites you. You still got, you still seem to have that fire to do this. To, yeah. to stay with this franchise. Whereas, you know, you, you know, there could be a Leonard Nimoy thing happening where you're like, I don't want to be Spock and you don't want to be Mr. MK. What still brings you back? What still excites you about this? Oh, that's a that's a really good question. Um, well, Clearly you got some issues to work through. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's, you know, it's, it's 100 guys on the team. There's a lot of new 
ideas that come in, you know, obviously I don't think of every idea, so there's a lot of new ideas that come in, and I think it keeps it fresh for everybody. So, um, from that standpoint, you know, in a lot of ways we feel like, you know, this whole Challenge Tower thing, we never did anything like that before. So, it, you know, that, that, that gives us energy, that gives us, like, you know, creative ideas. All right, so Ed, we're gonna we're gonna send you off because we we kind of have uh, we kinda got a celebrity coming in who's uh, starring in well, some of the stuff we're seeing here tonight. Michael J. White is. Would he be your choice for Jack? You think? Pardon? Would Michael J. White be your choice for Jack? Oh yeah, easily. He, I think he's awesome. He's awesome. He's perfect. When when I first saw him in that uh, Rebirth video, I was like, oh man, that is Jack right there. Awesome. All right, well. We're gonna thank you for your time. This is your party, so we gotta let you go have fun. Thank you, sir. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. It's looking great. We're gonna swap in. We'll see you soon. Take care. Bye. So Ryan is still gonna beat people up, and uh, we're gonna have Michael J. White coming over here. I think in a couple of, uh, in a couple minutes. So you've been quiet. How you doing? I'm doing awesome, dude. I get to play this game while you're doing all the work. <laughs> it's so hard to hear, obviously. But hopefully I'm going to get a... Oh, my God. <laughs> all right. Should we, uh, should we spend some of our ill-gotten coins in the crypt? Uh, not just yet. We're going to have Michael. Mr. Jai White's going to be coming over here and just... Just a second. For folks at home, it's a little loud. So we're, we're getting the music adjusted. Now, how much time have you spent with the tag mode? Uh, I played through the tag ladder probably about like three times. And, uh, you know, it's kind of cool because you can augment the tag from being just tagging somebody to tagging them and having to come up with a special move or actually just having to come in and throw a couple of fireballs or whatever, depending on what their projectile attack is. So like a little buddy pickup. I guess we get you now. Yeah, I guess so. All right. You, you probably want to pick that up. So before we get Michael Jai White over here, we've actually got somebody Edmund talked about. You want to introduce yourself to the guys at home? Sure. Uh, my name's Kevin Tantero, and I'm the director of the Mortal Kombat Legacy series. So you kind of started a whole thing. So talk to us about the first video that you did, how that came together, because let's be clear, this is not some crazy high production thing. This was kind of like you and some friends, yeah? Yeah, it was, uh, I got lucky that everyone was in town. I had a, a equipment available to me. So I decided, you know what, I really want to show people that I can make Mortal Kombat, you know, into live action again. So I just grabbed the camera, grabbed a bunch of my friends and put together a nine minute short and it ended up doing pretty well. And now we're here. So, clearly, if this is the passion for you to make like a Mortal Kombat short that has now turned into something else, you're kind of a gamer, right? Oh yeah, no, this, I, I used to play this game when I was uh, when I was a teenager. So it's kind of a big dream of me to be kind of. I forced myself into the Mortal Kombat team, so this is a big deal for me. And your approach was very different because. Let's face it, over the years we've seen a lot of basically fan-made Mortal Kombat videos of varying quality. We love you, Internet. We're not hating. But, so for you, you, kind of, you didn't quite go that route. You kind of went in another way. So talk to us about why you chose to do that. I just felt like, um, you know, like comic book movies made the big shift. Um, I felt like video games deserved the same thing as far as being taken very seriously. Um, I didn't want to, um, at the level of 
cliche cheesiness that video game live action properties tend to attach to itself. So I just wanted to take it, I wanted to take the source material very seriously and that's what we sought out to do and that's what we did. Nice. Now, how do you make the leap from, hey everybody, do you want to do something real quick over the weekend to, by the way, can I take you to, to Canada to do some stuff for a little bit longer? A lot of begging. And um, I think uh, the fact that the first short film, they liked what they saw, that they so they were creatively attached to it. And so what's your background for folks that haven't followed you, haven't been stalking you on the internet? My background does come from more dance performance stuff, whether it be, you know, I directed a Britney Spears tour and directed Fame, and so it's very different, but... I originally always wanted to do genre stuff, and uh, this was my way in. Because I knew no one was going to give me that shot to say, hey, yeah, this is the guy that should do a martial arts, sci-fi, horror, action movie. So I said, you know, I got to do it myself so I can prove it to other people. And so when you did kind of slap this thing together to make that short film, just how gorilla was it? It was gorilla. We did the whole thing in two days. Two days. And how about the location? Is that like oh. somebody's house? No, the location was a place called Lacey Street Studios. Uh-huh. And they, because it's such a big space, they had an apartment set, a cop set, you know, another apartment set, and um, it just ended up working out. And then what's it been like working on the on like the proper series now? It's been great because I've had the support of Warner Brothers and, and Weeby and Ed Boone. So he, we've been working together to make it happen, and um, they've been great. Their support has been fantastic. And so as far as casting goes, you know, clearly you were sort of limited, right, to the people that you knew, and apparently you know a pretty broad range of people. Uh, but talk to us about why Michael Chai White was the Jax for you. There is no one else who could possibly play Jax. Uh, Michael Jai White has got the persona, he's got the martial arts training, and he actually just looks like Jack. So I didn't know Michael. Um, We met through a mutual friend of ours who was a fight, uh, our fight choreographer, and I approached him that way. Nice. Were you intimidated at all, or were you just fearless? Because, I mean, you were this dude, I want to make kind of a, a fan film, hey, be in my film. At first I was very nervous, but... I think they. Uh, I think he liked the fact that I had a lot of passion for the project, and I knew the game very well, and I had an idea on how to make it realistic and for the new 2011 version. Nice. All right, I think we're going to get Michael over here for a second. Fantastic. You know, final thoughts. Have you had a chance to play this new Mortal Kombat? Or were they just teasing you? Did they say, make the short film, make the web series, we'll get it to you later? No, I've actually played it, and I love it. I've been memorizing certain moves for certain characters. I'm pretty good with smoke, but not. And I want to get better at Scorpion, so. And then favorite stage, favorite fatality. Right now, my favorite fatality is with Noob. Uh, because he can summon his his other side. And, he, and they take the opponent's legs and play tug of war. Therefore, ripping the person in half while they're still alive. Very nice. Last question, one of the things Ed told us a little while ago was that you shocked him because you knew more about MK than he did. So tell us the most insane factoid you know about MK that no one else knows. Well, you know, that's a really hard question because a lot of people know uh, MK history, but not a lot of people know the Sub-Zero character or name who killed Scorpion whether it be like Bihan or they, they name another Lin Kuei warrior, but it, it's actually Bihan who killed Scorpion. Very nice. All right, well, thank you, sir. Thank you. And for folks that are looking for that web series, where can they find it? Uh, where, what? For folks looking for the web series, where can they find it? They can find it on youtube.com slash machinima. All right. Cool. Well, thank you, sir. You do good work. Thank you. Classy MK. We appreciate it. Thank you. Take care. All right, so we're going to be getting Michael Jai White over here in a second. In the meantime, we got 
Ryan actually beating Jax up. chat room or the comments or send your tweets to us at GameSpot and uh, we'll try to beat Liu Kang and Ermac with this microphone in my hand. See if I can actually do the extra before I die with Jax. Oh, not look good. Yep. All right. Let's see if I can do this one. So, Ricardo's getting a new friend here, Michael J. White. Ricardo Mike. All right, everybody, we have Mr. Michael J. White here. I feel very small. This is a big dude, but it makes total sense because he's he's Jax, uh, and actually he's more than Jax. He's an actor that's got a pretty long resume, so uh, I'll be a nerd and say I know you as Spawn. <laughs> but um, talk to us about what it was like becoming kind of a part of the new Mortal Kombat like legacy online. Well, I mean, it was a great opportunity. I mean, I I always uh, dunk Mortal Kombat. And uh, I always wanted to get the chance to play Jax. I was supposed to play it in the last movie, but I, you know, unfortunately, the, the schedule didn't work out. But this time, I, I got to do my Jax thing. It was good you missed. You dodged the bullet there, so you're fine. <laughs> but um, so you know, we were talking to Kevin. How did it go from do you want to do this quick thing on a weekend to oh, by the way, this is a bigger thing now. You want to come up to Canada for a while? Hey, I was I was proud of it, you know. The reason I did the first thing is I believed in it, and we see the fruits of it. I mean, I I, I really applaud Kevin's talent and the gumption to go out and, and shoot his own thing, and uh, to be a part of it is just like a, a great great opportunity, and and the and the you know the, the success of it, bringing us to where we are now. I mean, it makes me feel like you know I'm. I'm I'm very happy for that decision. Yeah. Now, how familiar were you with Mortal Kombat before you hopped on? Well, I you know, I used to play Mortal Kombat with my teenage son, and uh, you know, so I was very aware of it. Yeah. I, I was aware of most fighting games, you know. So, uh, you know, Mortal Kombat coming up, you know, growing up and you know play, playing that stuff is like that's old hat for me, and and, and I you know that's. I was just a fan of the whole thing, and, and seeing where it's gone to now, it, it makes me, uh, you know, really, really proud to be a part of it. So, you know, as an actor, th there is actually a story to Jax that they kind of fleshed out, especially for the stuff that you're doing. Did you approach it like a real job, or did you feel, did you approach it more like um, you were playing a, an icon, like when you did Spawn or when you do those big characters? Well, see. I mean, you're always playing a human being, so I, you know, I approach it like, like any any kind of character that I'll be playing. I, you know, I have to have a biography for him, and uh, this one being that he's a, a officer of the law, military trained, and you know, he's very, um, very serious about you know, doing his thing, uh, you know, uh, upholding justice. So that, that's kind of where it starts with this character. So I mean, you know, it was, um, to me, it's, it's just like if I was doing a movie, a web series, television show, commercial, it's all the same thing. You, you got to really know your character. Now besides knowing the character, because of who Jax is, it's going to have to be a little physical. And so for you, maybe not as hard, because you kind of know some stuff. Tell us about your background, because you're kind of a badass, martial arts wise. Well, yeah, I've been in martial arts ever since I was seven years old. And, uh, you know, I've got black belts in seven different styles. And also I've done kung fu and a lot of different weapon systems. Uh, it's part of the philosophy I have on life is, you know, you, I get a black belt in one style, I put on a white belt in another style. I, it's, you always should be humble and, and learn new things. And, and, and just kind of like, you know, so I kind of look at life like that. You know, you're always a, a beginner somewhere. 
you know so you humble yourself to like learn more and you try to be the best that you can be so speaking of learning new things have you had a chance to play the new game very little very little i mean it, in between everything i got a chance to play uh, one, one time yeah yeah so you liking it you think jack you approve of how jack's turned out yeah i'm thinking how I, i'm thinking all the all the new stuff on the new game and so for you, if you could have your own fatality, now that you've seen some of the ones in the game, what would it be? You said if I, if I could have my own fatality? Yeah, you know how like when they rip each other's heads off and do horrible things? Is there, is there one you've seen that kind of stands out that that could be yours? Well, I mean, I haven't seen all the fatalities yet. There's some like, there's a lot of fatalities that just make me groan. Like I'm just like, oh, like that ripping the person in half one. That's like, that That one's like, you can't get more gnarly than that. Well, for a guy, there's one, uh, it's an x-ray attack. That Jade character puts his staff in between your legs real hard. So that that's, that's very grown worthy. Yeah, it sounds like it would be. I, I haven't seen that one. All right. Now, as far as the web series go, have you finally had a chance to see the finished product? Well, I, I saw the, uh, the uh, legacy episode, the yeah. first legacy episode. Uh, I think tonight we're going to glimpse the second rendition of the um, legacy. Does it turn out how you expected? Are you surprised at sort of how it's come together, considering the little tiny thing that you guys started it with? Well, it always turns out better than I expect because uh, Kev Kevin is a master at what he's doing. He, he he knows what he's doing, and you know I have all the faith in the world in this guy. He's going to be like one of the best directors in Hollywood. Awesome. Well, hopefully he's going to keep you employed because you're kind of an awesome dude. So thank you. we thank you for your time, sir. You're doing the good work. All right, my we brother. wish you much success. Take care. All right, all right. Good, good to meet you too, quiet guy. All right. Quiet guy's been playing. All right. Thanks, man. All right. Thank you. All right. That was Mr. Michael J. White, better known as Jax in this new web series. Now, if you guys hear some noise behind us, it's actually they're showing some of it right now. Episode two, we are kind of torn because we are we are playing the game. All right, you do that. I'm gonna see who else I can rustle up. So you give me two seconds. Keep the folks entertained. I'm looking at the chat room right now, and whoever the dude that says FKB, we that Ryan is awesome. He is a he's my number one dude. Is, uh, so yeah, so I'm gonna pick some characters right here. I'm gonna let you guys pick them for me, all right? Uh, let me get it out to this player select screen. Let's see if you guys want to tell me something. All right, so I got this character select screen up here, and uh, you guys tell me who do you want to see here? I'm looking at the chat room. And unfortunately, I can't show the uh, super cool thing behind us. Of course, they're showing episode two business of Mortal Kombat Legacy. But I am looking at this character select screen right now. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and pick my own character since no one in the chat room is making any noise. Ants Man. Let's see, I'm going to look for my good friend. Let's see, I don't know. Like all of them, really. Let's see. Uh, what have I been showing you guys? I haven't shown you guys. Show you guys any Raiden, really? Sindel, he wants to some Sindel, see some Sindel. I think they're getting Peter over here, who's uh, one of the stars of Mortal Kombat Legacy. So while you might not get to see episode two, you will get to see Peter shortly as uh, my game loads here. And I've got Raiden and Sindel versus apparently Kano and Stryker. So let's see how this goes down. Everybody, we've got Mr. Peter Shikoda here. He was an actor on uh, the web series going on right now. We're actually making him miss the episode, one of the episodes he's in. No, I'm gonna do the 
the web the season finale. Okay. But, uh, yeah, you are. They can miss this. Somebody else is enjoying it. So. Oh well. Well, sure they'll get it for you on a DVD. I think so. I think I could uh, right. that's good. work so it out. So talk to us about how you got involved in the project. Uh, you know, through the normal channels, I have uh, a, a team, uh, some reps, and uh, we heard about the, the, the casting process that was going on. But um, I've been uh, pretty much very, very closely clocking the project since uh, you know it's, uh, it emerged last summer, sometime the, yeah. the initial one, Rebirth, and uh, I've been just waiting patiently for it, uh, you know. To present itself, and it did, and uh, I got the opportunity to meet Kevin, and uh, we hit it off, and he offered me the part of uh, Sector. So, you know, actor, I know you want to make your own decisions and whatnot. What attracted you to this? Because you could have just said no. Well, of course, there's, you know, I'm Asian. Um, there has, you know, this, the, the Asian, the, 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 the connection to the Chinese, uh, you know, mythology, uh, Japanese uh, mythology, martial arts. See that? And, and um, Something really cool just happened. Yeah. I think Kano got his eye blown out or something. I don't know. Don't take my word for it. I can't see. This is part of the canon. Kano's only got one eye. They're just fixing it. That's right. That's right. All right. So what attracted you to it? I mean, did you play games growing up? Did I, did. I did. I uh, did. I played both, you know, Nintendo, ColecoVision, and television. But when Mortal Kombat came out, uh, it was like, what was it, 89, 90? Yeah. Uh, everybody right. was all over it. I mean, it was violent. Um, in that time of my life. You know, I was like a teenager, and uh, uh, that interested me, just like every other you know teenage guy. And uh, I got into it, and um, you know, I could play like Dig Dug, or I could play Mortal Kombat, where heads are getting severed. I'm going to play the, the combat for sure. And so, for you to come back to it now that you're all grown up, yeah, got a career, mm -hmm. uh, to get to play one of the characters in this, it's a dream come true. You know, I was always very fond of uh, Sub Zero myself. Uh, fortunately, a very good friend of mine, a, very, a, a massive talent, Kevin OTG, plays uh, Sub Zero. Yeah. That you know, he has my blessing. But uh, when I found out that Sector was going to be involved, and I read the script, and, and, and Kevin uh, well, placed me there, I, you know, that was that was perfect. It was fine for me because, uh, in some ways, I kind of he's kind of um, similar to Boba Fett, at least in my eyes. You know, a cyborg ninja. It's cool. Flamethrowers, missiles out of their chest. And, you know, cyborgs they, are cool, especially cyborg ninjas. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. And uh, you know all these, uh, you know the gadgets that you've got. You know, this, is, this is one of the more flashier characters. And so, for you as an actor, did you prepare for this like a like a normal role, or was um, it a little more challenging? I'll tell you the truth. It um, it really developed. Uh, Pre-production happened very quickly. So when I came on board, it was. A, Literally three, four days uh, later, I was uh, flying to Vancouver to uh, to shoot. Um, uh, physically wise, uh, I mean, I, I like to consider myself in decent shape, and I have some martial arts knowledge, so I think I can, you know, pretty much step into the role. A lot of my roles are very physical, so um, you know, I kind of fit in into into the, my my current resume. So we don't want to we don't want to support too many spoilers for the series, but clearly we know this dude as a as a Robo Ninja, right? Uh, is that how you start out when we see you in the series, or because you know, as in the game, they didn't, they weren't always robos. It's true. Um, there, there, there are, uh, there is uh, some scenes. I think Kevin's already given it away, but uh, we do start off uh, Cyrax and Sector. It's, uh, Shane, Warren Jones, and myself. We start off as humans, um, and we have uh, you know some dialogue. We get some backstory to and, and, and reasoning to why we're uh, we're. we're about to become the robots, and then uh, you actually see the, uh, the, the, the 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 transformation in the clinic, the medical transformation. So they did that in the clinic. <laughs> it, it is a clinic. It uh, was kind of I actually shot in a mental institution uh, outside of uh, just outside of Vancouver. So, but yeah, it was a hospital. But I think they were doing lobotomies uh, a few decades ago. All right, then that's fine. I do. You know, we've heard through the grapevine that the actual location was kind of a. An adventure in and of itself, yeah. really haunted. Yeah, that, that that's exactly the, the the location I'm talking about, Riverview Hospital. Uh, yeah, they like it. They do. They really do. They like it. Um, yeah, Riverview Mental Hospital. Big facility. Lots of ghosts. This thing. Interesting. Did yeah. you see anything? I didn't see anything myself, but I'll tell you, it, it's kind of creepy walking the halls to uh, to 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 the uh, the set. Definitely. Nice. All right, now have you had a chance to play the game much? I have not. I have not. I, you know, uh, 
I, I actually was uh, scheduled to, to be uh, at that web launch on Tuesday, but then, uh, you know, something's happened. I couldn't make it, and I was really looking forward to it, because, come on, I know these guys, there's uh, the millions of guys around the world that, you know, they, they'll line up at midnight just to play that game, and I had that opportunity, and I, you know, kind of messed that one up, but, uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to playing the new one, for sure. I'm pretty sure playing who you did, you earned yourself a copy. They'll get you one, promise. I was told a couple of times, and, uh, you know, I'll, I'll be expecting it. Now, for you, were you surprised that this kind of warranted all the attention it's gotten? Just from just from proper actors, because there've been a lot of fan films. We'll be honest. Yep. On the MK side, maybe not the same quality as the one that you're in now, right? For obvious reasons. Uh, but video games becoming something, you know, like like what it is. Yeah. Well, uh, what was the question? <laughs> no, I'm sorry. No, it's all good. It's a little loud. <clears throat> were you surprised that uh, you know video game property has morphed into? What you you know what you're starring in right now? Um, I'm not surprised. I mean, it absolutely had uh, all the potential in the world uh, in the mid '90s, as we've seen you know, from the success of the first two movies. Um, and I think uh, uh, enough, just exact. It's all timing. I think it, just exactly enough amount of time had passed for someone to reboot it. Um, so the, that figured in perfectly, timing-wise. But the fact that that, that he, he had handled it so uh, so well. It's, it's the actual, I think, the reasoning behind its success now. Kevin's a, it's a, a, a brilliant, and uh, his vision absolutely was uh, delivered. All right, so before we let you go, uh -huh. we don't want you to spoil anything, but for folks that want to check out the series, you want to give them a teaser for something exciting about your character to look forward to? I think everybody knows what uh, they're going to be looking forward to. There's going to be a... a, a it's going to be you. It's going to be me, and uh, we'll... we'll it's going to be Sector, but there's going to be a badass fight in that webisode, I'll tell you. It's going to be uh, flashy, dynamic, and uh, I don't think anybody's seen anything like it. People have seen Transformers uh, fight. Nobody's seen like people with this kind of fluid movement, martial arts. And I, I don't think this has ever been uh, uh, put together this way. I think people are going to be um, quite pleased. All right, well, we thank you for your time. We're going to let you mingle some more. It's a party. And maybe, the, cool. maybe they'll replay that for you so you can see it. I'm sorry I made know. you miss it. It's not a problem. Not a problem. Thank Thanks for you, having man. me here. Thank Take you. care. All right. Well, there you go. So before I fall out of this chair, sorry, um, we're going to change it up a little bit. You know, <clears throat> looking at things, I think we're going to have to try some of the Challenge Tower. All right. I think, you know what? Why don't we do that? Do them all at the end? Uh, sure, let's do that all at right. the end. I'm going to see if I can round up somebody from the team because right. we got a lot of people asking about the online modes, which we haven't talked much about. No. So I see somebody. I'm going to grab somebody. I will be back. You want to keep the folks at home I'm entertained? I'm totally uh, be through with some Challenge Tower. So we'll be keeping you busy with the Challenge Tower. So Challenge Tower is the one thing that we haven't shown you guys so far and uh, is what is Sonya Blade first up the bat. So the way this works is that it's pretty much matches that are conditional so as you'll see in this first you know it'll probably start us out pretty 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 easy uh, but you'll see it's pretty much forcing you to pick the character that you know they're giving you in the challenge tower so in this case we're doing uh sonya blade number one land each special attack within 25 seconds so this is what we got to do for the challenge let's try it There you go. There's uh, challenge number one done. Success. And we are now going into challenge number two. So the way this works is it kind of keeps you with the one character for a while. So we'll be Sonya for probably about like six or seven challenges. So as we see, train defense. So the first part of the challenge tower obviously teaches you the moves and kind of, I mean, really the whole thing is just kind of getting you really way into knowing how to use these characters. So let's see what we got here. So this is going to avoid block, avoid or block all incoming attacks for 15 seconds. Let's check it out. Fast. Folks, introduce yourself. Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Hans Lowe, senior producer on uh, the Mortal Kombat game. All right. So we're we're taking questions from folks at home. We're seeing a lot of people ask us about the online modes, which we can't really show right now because game's not out. 
it would be us online kind of hanging out, doing our own thing. Uh, so talk to us about what online modes you guys have here for people to play. Well, I think like online's been very important for us, and it's something that we've uh, really focused on since the, from the start. Uh, we got a very full online experience. You know, you have your one-on-one uh, one-on-one one -on -one experience going on. You also have your tag team matches where uh, if you and a buddy are at one house and another, uh, another two buddies are at their house, you guys can play online against each other and tag. Uh, and then we got something new for the game also as uh, King of the Hill, which is our uh, kind of like our group session where you have up to eight people kind of hanging out together in a room and kind of watch each other play and uh, taunt each other a little bit while you're at it. Now, how much uh, were the online modes that you guys wound up creating for the game influenced by what the internet was asking for? Because we know internet kind of got a loud voice. Yeah, I mean, definitely. I mean, the fans definitely spoke about things they wanted to see, and the, I think, like, you know, tag team is something new for us. I mean, other games have done it in the past, but it's something new for us. So we definitely listened to what people wanted to get see in a game, what they thought would be cool. Uh, of course, we tried to put our own spin on it, but, uh, you know, it, like I say, it's something that we really, really put a lot of thought and effort into. All right, so I think that pretty much covers the online modes uh, for folks that had questions about them. So one thing that I know Ryan and myself have, yes. we have a lot of thoughts on the Challenge Tower. They are, <laughs> they are mixed yeah. because we have a love-hate relationship with it. So for folks at home that are, that are watching this, why don't you explain to them how many floors are on this thing? and just how hateful you guys felt when you were making them. Well, I, okay, well, we wanted to make it fun. I mean, you know, we actually have like 300 challenges. So, to be honest, you're probably looking about eight hours of gameplay for the average player. And uh, we try to mix it up. Some are easy, we'll admit, and some are a little bit more difficult. Uh, but then at the same time, if you do find it's really tough to do, you have the ability to uh, buy your way past the, the challenge. So, now we have to ask because we have it. Right. Like, we've been using all of our coins for the crypts because we want to see all that stuff. And we're also a little nervous. Like, is there any kind of penalty associated with buying your way past it? Well, let me say, if, if you get all the way through and win everyone, there's a prize at the end for you. So, so it's maybe not a good thing to buy your way well, past. Well, you, know, you might want to buy your way for now. You can always go back and try those ones again. They're, they're right. still locked, so you can always go back when you feel rested and ready to go for it. You can, you can try again. All right. Now, one of the things we talked about with that earlier was that the game's really good about documenting everything. We, we kind of, we really dig being able to cop the moves and check them out. Yeah. But, you know, Ed pointed out that that doesn't mean that's everything. Oh, no. Oh. And so what we're curious about is how did you guys decide what other stuff to put in? Like, um, we're not allowed to talk specifics. It's got a right. PR lady back here with a knife at my throat. Oh, I know, I know. Okay. She's looking at me just as bad. Like, like, don't even open your mouth on that. Uh, to be honest, it's like Mortal Kombat's always known for its secrets. Okay? So I think we, we kind of looked at some of the stuff we've done in the past. We wanted to make things fun for people. So, I mean, there's going to be a lot of fun, exciting uh, secrets in the game. You know, it's just going to take a little digging. You're going to have to play it a bit and find it and unlock it. But I think people are going to really like it. I mean, one of the things we did a lot is like we give you like the first fatality. But then, you know, every character has at least two fatalities. So you're going to have to dig for the second or third fatality. Now, as far as the, the crypt goes, we can't talk too much about it, but you guys kind of took a different approach with it. That there really seems to be a lot of gross stuff in this game. Ah, oh, graphic. Is graphic, maybe, let's but, call it graphic. Uh, yeah. So, just really curious as to, does everybody sit in a room and think up all this foul stuff and then make a big list? How does that work? Oh, that's pretty close. It's, and uh, is there like, do you guys ever creep each other out when one dude comes up with some really horrible stuff? Oh, uh, uh, no, never. That never right. happens. Uh, no, it's actually pretty interesting. Like, if you walk by the conference room, if the door happens to be open, and we're talking about this kind of stuff, if you don't know what they're talking about, what you just hear, like, what the... What is wrong with these people? And they got, oh, no. Oh. They're talking about fake houses. Oh, it's about the crypt. You know, they're like, okay. But. So, it's kind of an HR department's nightmare, pretty much. Well, as long as it's in context, we're okay. If it was like anything else, I think we'd be in serious trouble. <laughs> nice. Now, for you personally, what are your, uh, you know, what are your most favorite elements about the game? Uh, for me, I actually like the fact that we've come, you know, gone back to the 2D fighting mode. Uh, for me, it's just a faster gameplay experience. 
I think that's a lot of fun. Uh, and you know, I think it's also kind of like a shout out to the original uh, arcade game. So for me, you know, kind of growing up playing the game, it kind of like it hits that nostalgia for me. I'm like, God, I remember when I was playing this. And it's kind of like these updated looks of the characters and moves. So there's things that remind me like, oh yeah, I remember that fatality. So for me, it's, it's kind of a walk down memory lane in some ways. You know, one thing that's new to memory lane are the x-ray attacks. You know, I think that, again, I think Ryan and I have some questions about the x-ray attacks. Feel like they should maybe do more damage. And we only say that because there are times in the tower that we wish they would. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, I mean, there's, there's always that. But I mean, the thing is, you gotta look at the overall experience and try to keep a balanced game. Uh, if we gave them too much power, then it's gonna be like, oh, I do an x-ray and I can do 70% damage just with an x-ray alone. I think people would be a little upset at that point. So, gotta keep it competitive. All right, so we're taking questions from the folks at home. No, I don't think so. No. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so someone wants to know if when you're in the story mode, can you go back to checkpoints or chapters in the story mode after you completed it, or do you have to start it over? Uh, I'm going to say you're going to have to start over. I mean, it's a, I mean, as you're going through the game, you save as your progress as you move forward, but it's obviously you're just working your way through it. I will say to the folks at home, as I was playing it, um, there were times where I did have to sleep. It is kind of a long game. Why? Just because I'm a little <laughs> tired. I was able to kind of pick up where I left off. Yeah. So it's really good about that stuff. Let's see. I'm, I'm looking at questions. There we go. Uh, all right. Uh, <laughs> a lot of these questions you can't answer because I'm getting the look. So yeah. <laughs> sorry, folks at home. <clears throat> I wish you know, we could answer it. But. Yeah, I do want to point out this is some of the fun stuff that's in the tower. Yeah, it's not your traditional. Yeah, sort of I mean, yeah, it's not your basic like, oh, just fight this match and do another match this way. You know, like what you're seeing right now is like you know, you know, defeat 20 of these first cows. You know, just go like, and you have to you know use either your uh, projectile throw or do the uh, ground pound. You know, and, and it's just like it's an onslaught. It's like, can I do it fast enough? You know. Uh, we got like some other ones where like it's almost like a quick draw, like who can fire off their uh, projectile first. Yeah. Uh, actually, one of my favorite actually is uh, Test Your Luck. Yeah. Uh, this is because it's just so random. You never know what you're going to get. You know? Now, one thing we noticed in playing is there seem to be kind of customized discussions between some of the characters. Uh, is that kind of the case throughout the whole game? Uh, we mean like customized. Right playing. with the start of a fight. Oh, you mean like the way the enter come in the screen? Yeah, I think what you know Ed and the team really want to do is you know, give each character a very unique feel to themselves. You know, it's not like oh we just use the exact same moves for everybody. It's like yeah. let's make everybody have their own unique style, fighting, movement. Yeah, you know, make it so it's easier for people to endear themselves to maybe a certain character or characters. You know, as far as you know the, the roster, which we can't really talk about. We can talk about Kratos. Yeah, uh, PS3 exclusive. You know, talk to us. I mean, he's clearly a pretty good fit. Yeah. But I guess the big question is how much kind of discussion went on between you guys and Sony Santa Monica? Because let's be honest, we think all these, all the Mortal Kombat characters are really awesome. Uh -huh. Kratos kind of kills everything he sees. Yeah. So how could he not win every fight? Talk to us about the debate that happened there. Oh, uh, you know, yeah. Well, Kratos is you know, the god of war. He is a god. But you also remember, you know, we have our own gods as well. You know, you know, Raiden is a god as well. So, uh, but I think you know he's a really great fit, and we did work closely with the guys over in so uh, Sony Santa Monica. Uh, you know, with Stig and uh, you know William Weisbaum and you know Adam and a bunch of the guys over there. And you know, I was probably on a call with these guys maybe two to three times a week. You know, kind of going over with them like, hey, these are some of the fatalities we're thinking about. What do you guys think about it? Or, you know, how about these special moves? And we want to try to keep it as true as possible to Kratos. So it's not just one thing like, oh, look, it's Kratos. But he doesn't move or play like Kratos at all. You know, we wanted to make sure that he was Kratos. So. Right, what, was it a kind of a collaborative thing? Or did you guys get like the Kratos Bible and said, he's not going out like this? Uh, well, I mean, there were guidelines, but it was very, uh, you know, we, we definitely worked with them because they, they understand our universe, and, you know, and they were trying to be respectful to our characters, our universe as well. So there was a lot of collaboration going on, but yeah, they have their Bible just like we have ours. So. All right, let me, oh, you know what? We did get a question that you're probably going to be able to answer about okay. online. Um, for a tag team, can you do tag team online? And can it be four separate people at different places? I'm sorry, can you have what? 
Can you do tag team online and can it be four separate people at four separate places? Uh, you can do it online, but you have to, it'll only be able to do it with uh, two over two stations. So it's like you and a buddy versus two other people on another station. So, so you kind of got that. Yeah. Maybe for the next game. Yeah. All right. You want to toss something in? I was going to say that you're checking these uh, comments on the bottom of the video player page. So if you want to get some questions answered by Ricardo and any of the guys from Another Realm, be sure to put your comment in at the bottom of the page. Yep. And check it out. Test your oh, site. Oh, test your site. The uh, old ball and cup game. These, with these the MK get, Twister. These get pretty hard. Oh, yeah, definitely. There. We start out easy, you know. But the best part is, is like, being Mortal Kombat, if you fail, there is a penalty. You know, and I love the fact, you know. Of course, we have to do our version of it, you know, the severed head, the eyeball. Yeah. If you failed that one, I was going to laugh pretty hard. Like, really? You missed that one? Yeah. I was kind of You know, and we do have to give you guys the thanks for kind of putting those in because. As the tower gets much harder, yeah. they're kind of nice breathers yeah, most no. of the time. And I think one of the cool things is, like, after you unlock them, you can always go back out and just play the test your mice or test your sight or the test your strikes on your own time. So if you want to go play those puzzles again, you can. All right, so let's check this out. There's questions about different costumes, which I... I get the impression we got to be careful about because I'm getting looks. Yeah. So, for folks that are open for different costumes, what can we say? Stay tuned. Stay tuned. Stay tuned. We got a lot of things planned for uh, the game, you know, even after it launches. So, keep an eye out and see what happens. All right. I'll try. All right. Let's. Uh, <laughs> let's moving on. Now, 300 floors in the tower, 300 different challenges of yeah. kind of random stuff. So this is, you know, we saw here, it's real easy at the beginning. So let's right. just be clear with everybody at home. <coughs> this is easy right now. It's kind of simple. It's kind of chill. Yeah. This is not the case much later on. No. In fact, in fact, how did you guys come up with the 300? Was it easy or was it hard? Um... And I'll say there were moments, but uh, I think in the end it was one of those things like we, we had to draw a line and say, okay, where do we stop? Uh, I think if the guys would have, if they had the opportunity, would have just kept on making more and more if they could. But, uh, you know, there were times where you had to sit there and go, okay, what would we do something there? And then once someone got an idea, like, oh, I know what we can do. And then you just kind of snowball effect would happen. All right, let's so see. I have to say the 300 challenge, it's a tough one, man. Now, I want to. I want to hear back from the gamers out there. How many of them actually can do it on the first try? Well, we can already tell you that we're not a fan of floor 251. <laughs> we don't want to spoil it for the folks at home because we want you guys to suffer just as much as we did. Uh, but we're warning you, 251 is kind of a pain. Uh, let's see. Got questions about DLC? Not sure you can answer. Going to toss it out anyway. It's. Uh, will it be free or is it going to be a cost? Uh, I think you're going to have to wait on that one. We're, we'll have more information on that one soon, though. All right. Let's see. And just to kind of clear things up, people want to know if Kratos is going to be in story mode. I'm pretty sure that's been out there that it's not the case. No, he's not in story mode. I mean, if you play the uh, the ladder, uh, you know, you can select him and he'll have his own unique ending. But if you're talking about the actual story mode itself, he, he's separate from that. All right. So yeah, I guess we should tell the folks at home, they were in the chat room telling us uh, to look over that way. We've, uh, we've lost the connection that we had on the laptop to the chat room, so post your comments in the bottom of the page in the comment field if you've got some questions for us. <laughs> Sorry guys, it's live internet, what can yeah. we tell you? We, we do our best. <laughs> you know, so one of the other questions we've got here is, people are asking about what kind of post-release support you're going to see. So are you going to be able to support game with patches? Uh, to take that, it sounds like balancing patches that yeah, people are I asking mean, about. We're definitely keeping an eye on I mean, we, we do everything we can within our uh, development process, but to be honest, the best testers in the world is the public. And we're going to keep an eye on things people find. We have uh, several ways of updating it. We have like patches where we can do uh, updates that way. Some things we can do behind the scenes on the servers, and we'll just monitor it and we can do a little tweak, uh, you know, tweak parts, as we like to call them, to help keep the game balanced and everything. So, got another question here. 
about who's playable in story mode. And without spoiling anything, I think you can sort of give people an idea, right? Well, I th there's going to be a lot of characters in play, and I can tell you, like, in story mode, the, the game's kind of set up in terms of chapters. So it's kind of similar like in uh, MK versus DC universe, where we had, uh, you had like a chapter based on the character, and we're kind of doing the same idea here again. So you get to choose your character. I mean, you don't choose your character, but you play that character through a chapter, and then in the next chapter, you'll play a different character. It also gives you a good chance to kind of explore the way the different characters interact. All right. So... You know, that is an awful picture of me, I have to say. <laughs> it's a buffering image. Uh, you look fantastic. Uh, you're too kind. All right. So, checking this out right here. This is another example of kind of a, a change of pace that you guys put in the, in the tower mode. Yeah. Oh, the, the zombie. This yeah. One. yeah this, you, you have to have your zombies, you know. And, and the zombies do make a couple different type of appearances. This one is basically, you know, again, you have to destroy somebody within a certain period of time without getting pushed off the screen. Uh, we have another one where you have just one zombie coming at you and you just have to annihilate him. So we try to mix it up. You know, one thing we ought to mention for the folks at home, the, the, co the codes are back. Oh, the combat codes. Yeah. yeah. So we were kind of playing the arcade mode. You guys are very specific about where you have stuff. Yeah? Yeah. So in the arcade mode specifically, you have those codes. Do you want to give people some, some some tastes of what they can expect? Uh, you know, it, the codes are kind of like going back to the old arcade days. They're going to affect the way you play the game. You know, some will be boosts, some will be uh, things where you can weaken your characters. Uh, other things are a little bit more wacky, off the wall. You know, we, we're trying to give a good uh, a good mix of stuff out there for the people to discover and have fun with. So, so we've got somebody asking. Um, how many areas can you interact with in terms of the characters? Like, throw them into stuff. Uh, well, I mean, there, we definitely have uh, stage fatalities, and they're back in the game. Some of this, not all the stage out, but we have a good number of stages that do. Uh, so I think that's like, if, if that's what they're talking about, interacting with the stages, they're definitely back in that one. So. Right. I got a question here about um, characters. Do you start with all of them, or are some unlocked? Uh, I would say, a good majority of the characters are there at the point you start. I mean, we will have a few secrets there, but the core characters are all unlocked right at the start. And because we've had a chance to play the game, we can tell you, you're going to start out with a lot of what you want. But there's yeah. some cool stuff that you're going to have to work for. Yeah, definitely. Uh, let's see. The DLC characters, are they going to come with um, a comparable amount of fatalities as the ones on this? Well, you know, one of the things that Ed definitely wanted us to do is, like, if we're going to do DLC, we want to make sure it was a value. And that means, like, if we're doing characters, they need to be full characters. He didn't want us to do stuff like, oh, yeah, it's just a new skin for the character. And now, Scorpion wears a green tunic. And you're like, come on, really? But that's Reptile. He goes, no, no, no. Nothing like it. We, he wanted full characters, unique looks, unique moveset, unique x-ray, unique fatalities. He, he, made sure, he wants to make sure it's a value, that people will want to play them. And then just to be clear, you guys are working on that stuff now. It's not on oh, yeah. the disc. No, it's not on the disc. We're working on it, and uh, we got a lot of really cool things planned. And I, th I really think people are going to be surprised and really happy to see what we got coming. All right. I have a very specific question about Johnny Cage. Yeah. Well, this is Did what? you remove Johnny Cage block string infinites? You know what? Infinites are, are one of the things that we always keep an eye on. Like, it, just not just for him, but for all the characters. So, uh, we're, we're trying to balance as much as we can, when we can. So, if you find if you find these uh, infinites in general, we're going to notice and we're going to try to fix them. Now, we're looking at, will there be records for other people online so you know how many, got, how many times they've put out of a game? Uh, I don't think we have that information, but we definitely keep track of things like that so that if people do you know, do a rage quit, you know, there is the proper uh, penalty with it. So that it's not one of those things they can just jump out and say, yeah, I never got a loss. Ha -ha. You know, it's like we, we, we know people do it. We don't want to penalize the, the guys who want to stay in fight. All right, and here we have the uh, return of an old favorite. Tester Strike. Oh, well done. Perfect. Again, we want to really tell you guys at home, it looks real easy, but don't be fooled. Oh. You will hate this 
You will hate this test. Uh, and, and gets, a couple floors up. Yeah, it just gets progressively tougher and tougher. Uh, what are the differences between PS3 and Xbox? Well, you know, the games are actually very much on par. Uh, I mean, there's some exclusive stuff we have on PS3, and we have like also the unique, some uniqueness on uh, Xbox 360. So, like, on the PS3, you know, obviously, we have the uh, exclusive character uh, that we focused on for the game, which is Kratos. Uh, PS3 also has the exclusive 3D uh, stereoscopic support. On the Xbox 360, where uh, we were able to work with Microsoft and actually get your actual 360 avatars into the uh, King of the Hill Theater, which is really cool. So we're really excited about that. All right, so we're going to touch on something that we asked Ed, uh, and the internet is listening. No, oh, no. So this dude wants to know about rain. Why is the rain in there? Rain. Who? Uh, Are you talking about that Korean pop star? Uh, you know what I mean. So Ed said, if the internet made noise, you guys would give it some thought. No, so, yeah, no, that's true. I mean, we really this do. Is this is noise. This is noise. Out, this is second request for rain. I think we need a few more requests, guys. All Come right. on. Let, let, Everybody you know, at home, off. think about it. Seriously, we do listen to what you guys have to say. We try to do what we can to make you happy. So if this is what you really want, speak up. Let's see. I, there's a... There's a random question about Motaro, uh, which I don't think you can answer from the look of it. I'm, yeah. By look, I mean the look yeah. I'm getting. Yeah, I don't think I'm, I'm feeling heat on the back of my neck right now. Uh, all right, uh, I think that's one of those. All of it. We gotta just tell you, try it. Oh yeah, definitely go play the game, man. I, I think that, as a team, we're really proud of it. It's probably one of the best games we've put out in a long time. And now, because you guys are awesome, there's three more requests for rain. Keep them coming, guys. I need more than three. Come on. Uh, so there's a question about story mode being interactive. Um, is every story mode played through the same, or can you make decisions that change how it ends? The game's very uh, linear in that respect. I mean, we're definitely it's a retelling of the original MK story with a couple twists thrown in. All right. We're in line. So, all right. So we told you that we hate floor 251. Yes. Without spoiling anything, is there a floor in the tower that you you have come to hate as much as we hate 251? Personally? Yes. Uh, 300. That one is, uh, like I said, it's frustrating. Uh, I personally have yet to beat it. I'm trying. I'm definitely trying, but it's a, it's a tough one. Yeah. I got a question about Xbox 360 exclusive character. Anything you can say there? Uh, yeah, I don't have anything to say on it at this point. All right. Sorry, folks. We tried. Uh, I, we uh, he dodged it, but not, but in slow motion. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> All right. So, so Max, how much longer are we gonna go? I think we should give away these games and maybe show off the crypt a little bit and get out of here. Show the crypt, right? Um. All right. I think I we think got some ready. issues with the crypt. Oh, we can't show anything. Uh, I don't think we're ready to that one. Right. There's a lot of things in there that we kind of want to keep secret. You know? what, about, right. what about you show it to without actually opening anything? Is that okay or no? Uh, no, no, right. no, 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 no. Yeah. I, again, that look behind. I got you. Definitely some secrets they want to save for you folks at home. So we're gonna stay away from that. So we give away these games. Let's give away the game. Do so we right. want to get Hans make a question? Yeah, let's get a question. They're gonna put you on the spot, but you're an MK expert, right? Oh, what to do? What? You're an MK expert, right? An expert in what way? <laughs> Come up with a trivia question so we can give away these games. A trivia question, okay. Um, make it good. Make it a good one, huh? But don't make it impossible. We want to give these away. Okay. Well, now you're making it tough for me. Um, well, I had a really easy one, but I won't do that one. I think everyone already knows the answer to that one. Um, at what point does Raiden become known as Dark Raiden? The fans out there. Say that again? At what point does Raiden become Dark Raiden? All right. All right. Is that a thing? What's that? That's a thing, right? That's a, well, I'm just asking, when, at what point? I'm All right. At what point does Raiden become Dark Raiden? In the, in the MK storyline, you know, at what point did he, you know, like what game did that happen? All right, 
So there you go. Send us that answer, and uh, and you get to win this game, which is kind of cool. And we're getting an autograph while we're here. So it's going to be some good stuff. Uh, what? Got a couple more questions here for people. So as far as the tag team goes, are there going to be special animations for specific teams, like Liu Kang and Kung Lao? Oh, uh, you know what? That, I'm going to have to say no. And the other reason is not that we didn't think about it. All the permutations we would have to think of for every single combination, I don't think we would have enough space on the disc to do it. Well, plus, let's not forget, you're going to give us Shaolin Monks too at some point, right? I hope so. I really hope so. I mean, I worked on Shaolin Monks the first one, so I would love to work on a sequel. Well, we would like to see it. And just like the people that want to see rain, there's always hope, right? Yeah, there's always hope. You know, make some noise, people. All right. So are we gonna are we gonna wrap this up? All right, yeah, totally. All right, well, hands. We're gonna thank you for stopping by. No, thanks for having me on. Um, I guess we're gonna thank you for the 300 challenges in the tower. Uh, we're gonna do it back to about 300. We're almost there. Okay. Uh, so we're either gonna send you a thank you note or something really nasty oh, in the mail. God, oh God. So just oh, live with God. it. Thanks. But, uh, <laughs> thank you, sir. No, thank you. It's just been fun. Awesome. So Take much. it easy. Really appreciate right. it. Take care, man. All right. Is that it? I think that's it. Excellent. So we got our uh, trivia question out there for anybody who gets the right answer and wants to send it at GameSpot. Yep. We're totally going to pick from all the people who got the correct answer, and uh, there will be some lucky winners. Yeah. Um, I had fun. Yeah, totally. I got this no voice. Awesome. But I got I to play fun. this game. Thanks for doing all the talking. Sorry. No problem, man. <laughs> we hope you guys had fun. This is... This is the stuff we like to do for you guys. We had a blast. Yep. Um, it's been a lot of fun. We hope you guys liked it. We're going to have... We're doing another one of these tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. We, we get that, too. We're probably going to be there. we got a 6 a.m. flight. We're going to be... We'll be back in the office. Here's War 3. Yeah. Pip is going to be joining us remotely via magic of the internet. That's some hot stuff. It's going to be awesome. All right. So we hope you guys like this. We hope you get that this is some... This is the business. It's great, yeah. All right. Well, thanks very much. Thank you so much. Really appreciate you guys joining us. Hope you had a lot of fun again. We're going to get this wrapped up, and, uh, yeah, thanks again for joining us. All right. Take care.